By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back at the Knights of Thorn, the 10th edition here in Daventer, the Netherlands. We are reaching round number three. And in round number three, we have two Dutch players going face to face. We have Wouter playing a mono black deck and he's taking on Ron and Ron is playing a line dip bolt deck. And um, yeah, I mean, this promises to be quite an exciting game. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, because I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this part of the video, go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, and if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about the rule set. And there's also a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because yes, we have our own Patreon. And you can find that on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the player on the left, that is Wouter. Let's take a look at his mono black deck. And here we see the mono black deck of Wouter. Now, mono black has always been very popular amongst old school magic players. And, you know, I mean, being the bad guy is just more interesting. You know what I mean? So black is also a color that I've also felt a connection with as well. Just a lot of really cool creatures in black. And mono black is also kind of an affordable way to play old school, even though this deck is far from uh, affordable these days. But anyway, when we're looking at this list, we're seeing, you know, the usual suspects, Hypnotic Spectre, the Black Knights. I love having Black Knights on defense defense actually because of first strike if you have a double black knight on defense it can kill like a Suchi with that first strike ability we also see Suchis by the way in this deck then we also see two uh, Sangir vampires so those are the creatures and then we have this addition that you now almost always see in every mono black deck but it wasn't always like this says grandpa to me because we have underworld dreams and that's not really a staple in the mono black brews it used to be when you would build with underworld dreams uh, you would have your whole deck dedicated to it right you would have winds of change draw sevens and stuff to kind of punish your opponent for drawing cards howling mind perhaps but what we see now now is that it's a perfect addition to your mono black game plan because even without any forcible draws for your opponent he's still going to take one damage every single turn it's kind of like a copper tablet a one-sided copper tablet and that of course works really well with your aggressive strategy you've got you know you've got your dark rituals you can have an underworld dreams turn one on the board and then the pain already starts for your opponent what i also really like in the mono black decks is uh, a drain life you know drain life it's just a really good card, right? It's it's one black and one for a sorcery. And for every black mana that you spend, you can deal one damage to any target and you gain one life. I mean, it's kind of insane. It's a, a fireball with an upside, but the fact that you can only pump black mana in there, I, lo I love that, you know, these, these subtle differences and that makes uh, the drain life not too powerful. It's just a really good design, in my opinion. Also, the fact that you cannot spend more then, uh, for example, the toughness of the creature, if the toughness is four, you can play a drain life for five, but you still will only gain four life because you can only deal four damage to the creature and then the creature died. So I kind of like that as well about the card. Um, then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, I think Nevenerals Discs is a card that you have to play. When you're playing, uh, you know, your, your mono black, you just don't have answers to, for example, artifact. It's really difficult to deal with or uh, with enchantments for that matter. So you need that Nevenerals Discs to kind of, you know, clean up the board, you need some answers. So I understand the three Nevenerals discs here in the deck. And then we also see a single Greed here. I think Greed, it's just this interesting card that for some reason you just don't see it that often anymore, but it's still really good. I mean, you pay a black and two life and you draw a card. That's a pretty good deal. And I think it also really fits, you know, that black theme of being the black mage that you're greedy and you want more and you don't mind paying some life to like have more luxury. You know, that really fits... The, uh, the Black Wizard, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, it's looking like a good, solid deck. And uh, like I said, it's a classical choice for many old school players. And I'm looking forward to see the deck in action. So this is the list of Wouter. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Ron. And here we see the deck of Ron. So this is your Lion Dip Bolt deck, right? I mean, when I'm looking at this list, one thing's very clear. Ron is here to win the event. Because uh, when you play with decks like these, this is really like tier one stuff. Um, super aggressive, super lean, you know, every card here counts, every card matters. 
Um, what, what's interesting here, and we've seen that before in these line dip bull decks, is that they're going away from the sword supply shares, they're going away from the counter spell, they're just putting more and more direct damage in there. And also the creatures are very cheap to cast. And if you can just deal a little bit of damage with the creatures, you can do the rest with your direct damage. It's a super strong deck. Uh, what more can I really say about it? I, I think what I personally always miss with these decks, and again, that's really me, is that I kind of miss the personality. Like I can give you a pretty long list of players that play these type of decks. And yeah, you know, what more can I say about it? So yeah, it's a good deck. I think, by the way, uh, looking at this matchup today, it's going to be really tough for Wouter because he's got a lot of two toughness creatures. They will be mowed down by all the direct damage in this deck. And I mean, this deck is going to go so fast. And also the power cards in this deck is going to help it accelerate. He's got the disenchants for the Underworld Dreams, if that's even a problem for him. So yeah, I think I think it's going to be a really tough matchup for Wouter. So I would be surprised if Ron doesn't take away this uh, a win here today in, uh, in round number three. But hey, weirder things have happened in Magic. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's go to the, to the match and see how this is going to end up. Game number one, here we go. We've got Wouter sitting on the left with his mono black deck, facing Ron with his, with his line dip bolt deck. So just a lot of direct damage with some uh, small creatures in there. Let's see, there's a Sea of Brass. There's a Mox Sapphire into an Iron Claw Orc. So, uh, yeah, Iron Claw Orc, a 2-2. That's going to swing in probably next turn. Or are we going to see, for example, a Black Knight here? That would be quite nice for Wouter. Couldn't find a Dark Ritual there, turn one. There we see a Chaos Orb. Okay, so it's a Chaos Orb. Was kind of thinking about a Black Knight, but we see a Chaos Orb instead. So he can swing in for two. Put Wouter here on 18. Or does he have better options? Question mark. So Ron here taking a moment, trying to figure out the best line of play. I mean, if he has, for example, a disenchant, I would kind of use it now. Or do you want to wait until he activates his in respawn play disenchant? You do play mono black, so you know that he doesn't have, um, you know, an answer for that. But I personally, if I had a disenchant, would be tempted to use it right now. Just because you know that you can just cleanly take care of it, you don't have to worry. And you don't want to keep your, your white and one open endlessly. But let's first see what uh, what Wouter can do here. So he's on 18, of course, after the attack of the Iron Claw Orc. There's the Urborg. Card from Legends. It taps for black. That's good enough for Wouter. I believe it also takes away first strike, the Urborg. You've got the blue one, Tolaria. I play with that one just for fun. That takes away banding. <laughs> okay, here we see Underworld Dreams. So this is that enchantment for three black, and every time Ron draws a card, he's gonna it's gonna cost him a life, and it's actually pretty annoying for him. So are we gonna see a disenchant now on the Underworld Dreams? It's gonna take a damage from the city. Yeah, there's a disenchant. And this kind of shows how a good the underworld dreams is against ron because he could also disenchant the chaos orb here but chooses not to he'd rather go for the underworld dreams and i understand why remember ron's deck it's got a lot of draw sevens in there and of course you've got i believe your your ancestral recall i believe there's a brain geyser in there as well so it's it's really a, a deck that wants to draw cards also Ooh, he's gonna tap four here are we gonna see a target for the chaos orb oh no there's a mind twist for four beautiful altar with the uh, troll there, Ron is of course also the organizer of the Often Troll Cup. It's a beautiful event. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this is really tough, that mind twist. And there's the attack for two. Yeah, this is absolutely brutal here for Wouter. And uh, really tough. Losing that Suchi, for example. The Loa is not that bad because he just didn't have that many cards anyway. But it's not looking great for Wouter here after that uh, that troll twist. He is now going to uh, use the Chaos Orb. And he's going to flip on the city. And I understand that decision. But it's, it's a little too late, of course, after that mind twist. But I understand this decision because maybe Ron is having some mana issues here. And his deck really wants to have uh, blue. Of course, he has blue with the Sephiroth, but also white and red to cast what he wants. 
There we see the duel though. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Okay, he's just gonna animate. Swing in for six. Oh, that is huge. Wouter dropping to 10. Really needs to play out some blockers here. There's a Soul Ring tapping four. Okay, there's a Suchi. That's actually pretty good also because Ron doesn't have access to white, so cannot play a Disenchant or a Swords here. Well, doesn't play with Swords, of course. Does play with Psionic Blast now that I think about it. So he could play a Psionic Blast on the Suchi if he has it. That will be quite good and then he can swing in. Let's see if he can first find another land drop. I mean, this Suchi kind of stops all his attacks. Another line that he could do is simply attack with, for example, a Factory and Iron Claw. And then if Wouter blocks, he could maybe have like a, uh, a Lightning Bolt or a Chain Lightning to kill off the Suchi. So that's another line he could follow here. Could even consider just attacking with the Iron Claw, right? And if he blocks the Claw, okay, I lose it, but then I can play the Bolt and kill your Suchi. There's a Strip Mine. Yeah, gonna animate, gonna go for full aggression, and I understand if you look at the list of Ron, this is what you want to do with this deck, you know, you've got the burn to finish it off, so just go full, it, it doesn't matter if you lose one creature, that's actually a, a decent trait, losing a creature and dealing four damage, that's fine, he's gonna drop to six, and I mean, this is bad news for Wouter, and he does have to drain lives, I think drain lives can kind of get him back a little bit, like if he has a drain, now he can drain the, the Iron Claw and gain some life in the process, that would be quite nice. I mean, you really don't want to be at six against uh, the deck that Ron's playing with. Remember, full playset of bolts, full playset of chains, full playset of psionic blasts. It's just super risky. Gonna tap five. Yep, there's the drain life. That is, that's really not too bad. You know, he's gonna go up to eight, I believe. You know, and and Ron loses a creature here. We see Ron think, but I don't think he's got a lot of answers. Actually, no answers, to be honest. I think he just has to accept this. And I think if you're Wouter, just, you know, keep the Suchi untapped. It's it's very tempting to attack here, you know, for four, but it's just not worth it. you got to protect your life total here. There's the tap. Oh, there's a bolt in the face. You know, this is what I mean. So much direct damage. And maybe Ron has a draw seven in hand, wants to empty his hand and play a time twist or a wheel. That's definitely a a possibility here for uh, for Ron. Looking at his hand, what is he gonna do? There we see a Mox Jet. Gonna tap three, no, yes. Are we gonna see a draw seven? Oh, Psionic Blast, yeah, that's perfect. Psionic Blast. And then attack for two. And that means he's going to drop to three. So he's in bolt range. Uh-oh, Wouter, you're in bolt range. Quickly do something. He's in top deck mode, though. I have to root, of course, here for the underdog. Okay, there is a sinkhole, so at least that's something. And two cards in hand for Ron if he has a bolt here or a chain or a psionic blast. Yes, psionic blast. Winning the game here. Game number one. Now both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's uh, one game up for Ron, meaning Wouter here on the play. Let's see what he can do here. It was really tough for him there in game one. Look at that. Taking a mulligan. Starting with a card less. I kind of feel... Okay, there's a Loa. That's very unfortunate then, that Library of Alexandria that you play that when you have to take a mulligan. That probably means that next turn he's not going to play out anything because he wants to get an active Loa. And what I wanted to say, I kind of feel that if Wouter wants to stand a chance in this matchup, every all the stars need to be aligned, right? His deck has to do what it wants to do, and so far that's not happening for him. So uh, this, is, this is tough, I think, for Wouter. But let's first see what Ron's going to do. Looks like he's already in the tank here. Drawing card number eight, full grip of cards. I guess what he's um, what he's thinking about. There's a duel here. Not quite sure which one. Could be a volcanic. Looking at the text box. But we'll just have to wait. And how he taps passing the turn here to Wouter or not. Let's see what he's going to do. Yeah, passing the turn then in. Yeah, so here we see in the upkeep, right? Ancestral Recall. I kind of I kind of saw that coming. 
An Ancestral Recall is this card you usually play in the upkeep of your opponent. And then here, Vouter drawing to card number six, probably just gonna pass a turn exactly and hoping that next turn he can draw into card number seven and have, you know, the Loa game going. But it is risky business against Ron's deck, it's so fast. And I'm expecting creatures here, I'm expecting pressure. There's a Mishra's Factory, are we gonna see some jewelry as well? Some Moxon perhaps? There's a Black Lotus, okay. I mean, he has a lot of options, a lot of cards in hand after that Ancestral Recall. And he was also on the draw, so a lot of cards for him. The question is, is he going to use the Black Lotus here straight away? He's going to tap two, I believe, so it's probably then a red and a colorless for an Iron Claw Orcs. No, for a Time Walk. Okay, so he's going to take an extra turn. Okay, would have been interesting to then, of course, crack, for example, the Lotus for a creature, use that extra turn, start attacking, but perhaps he didn't have that in hand at the time. Anyway, he's going to crack the Lotus now. I wonder what he's going to do with it. Demonic Tutor, one black floating. Ay, 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 ay. And I wonder what he's going to do. He could be mean. Okay, yeah, of course. Of course, he's going to go for the strip. And once he could be mean and go for the Mind Twist, but this is the better play. Actually, Mind Twist would have been okay as well, but yeah, this is really tough for Wouter, right? He's been kind of waiting to get that Loa, to get it get it going, and then your opponent gets the extra turn, plays the Demonic, finds the Strip. Yeah, this is, this is brutal. And already Wouter is in this position where it's going to be really, really tough for him to get back into it. And that is obviously what power cards can do to a game, right? Ancestral Recall, Time Walk... And I mean, Demonic Tutor is basically also power. There we see an Iron Claw Orc head, of course, that one black still floating and passes the turn here. So what are we going to see? Just a factory and a pass. I kind of feel like Wouter needed, you know, a black and a dark ritual or something, put something on the board. It's not happening, though, and now he can swing in. And he can deal five points of damage already, and that's huge. You know, that's a quarter of your life gone. And I mean, Ron is really showing here the full strength of his deck. Wouter playing a Swamp here. Tapping. Okay, there's a Ritual. And there's a Suchi. Okay, at least having a Suchi now as a blocker. And I mean, I don't believe Ron has any white mana at the moment, because I do believe the dual land here, looking at the text box, is a uh, Volcanic Island. Gonna tap three. Ah, Psionic Blast. Yep, that's unfortunate. Gonna take another hit. Gonna drop the 13. And that's a problem, of course, with those four toughness creatures. And that's also a problem for the Suchi because the Suchi's and an artifact and it's got that four toughness. So there are just so many cards that can kill it. There we see a Chaos Orb. And he's gonna flip straight away because Ron stepped out. Gonna go for the factory. And I understand this choice because then you take out a creature threat and a land. And Ron is quite light on lands, you know, missed a few land drops. So, you know, that could be, oh man, there's a land. Okay. I thought maybe, you know, I mean, he needs, Wouter needs Ron to stumble, <laughs> you know. And sometimes that happens in magic, but it looks like today is not the day for Wouter. Gonna drop to nine. And he's now going to untap. Let's see if he, if he can do anything. Okay, we do see a strip here, stripping the factory. Again, makes sense. And now he's got his own Mishra's factory to block the Iron Claw Orc if he chooses, if Ron chooses to attack. And look at that, Ron's stuck on two lands. Okay, a little opening here for Wouter. Let's hope he can have a good turn. Put some more pressure on. I really hope to see a game three. There is a Swamp. He's on nine. Ron still on 18. Wouter now in the tank. His turn to think and think deep. Tapping three, tapping four. Ooh, that's a Pestilence. Ooh, Pestilence, maybe a card coming in from the sideboard. 
a card that I think is often overlooked. There's the attack, and of course the downside of Pestilence here is yes, it's really good against the Lion and the, and the Iron Claw Orc. The problem though is you're also hurting yourself, and that's something that Ron wants, because Ron's like, hey man, I've got enough damage, I can burn you out directly. And I, as soon as Bouter is going to use the Pestilence, which he probably is forced to do, to kill the Iron Claw, he will drop to 5 himself, which is quite risky. I mean, 5 is a double bolt and you're gone. So Ron here, again, a little bit in the tank, thinking, is he going to go for maybe some direct damage? Or not? Yeah, going to play the Disenchant. So that shows how, how good the Pestilence is, right? Targeting the Disenchant here, saying, you know, I want to keep my, uh, my Iron Claw alive here. And I'm already looking forward to the next combat step. Okay, there's a mace. That's actually quite good. Now he can attack for two. Because he's got that mace. To send the Iron Claw back. So Wouter manages to put some damage in. Putting Ron here on 15. And I think for Ron, the City of Brass is just a really important draw. It opens up white for him. But just also gives him that third land. You know, he's got a lot of spells in his deck that cost three. Ooh, there's a Loa. Not enough cards, of course, have an active Loa. It's going to tap four. Going to take a damage drop to 14. What are we going to see for four? There's a Suchi. Passing the turn back to Wouter. And I mean, looking at the hand there, by the way, of Ron, maybe he's already has seven. It's kind of hard to see how many cards he has in hand from this uh, viewpoint. We'll see. As soon as he activates the Loa, we'll know. Anyway, there's a fifth mana here, tapping five. Are we going to see Sengir? Sengir Vampire hitting the board. Beautiful creature, 4-4 four, four Flyer. So at least, at least Wouter is putting up a fight here in game number two. I was a little bit concerned after the very strong opening by uh, by Ron and of course the uh, the mulligan that Wouter had to take. But we do have a real game here, which is nice. I still feel that Ron really has, you know, the better board state, especially with the Loa. Tapping four again, going to take another damage, dropping to 13. There's another Suchi. And there's the pass. Yeah, doesn't want to attack here. Makes sense. There's the draw by Wouter. And it's going to be... I mean, Wouter needs another Sengir here. Or a Suchi. Just something to block the other 4-4. Because then he can... If Ron would go for an all-out attack, he can say, I'm going to gobble up your Iron Claw with the Vampire. Okay, let's see what he's going to do. There's a Gloom. Yeah. I think Gloom... Yes, it helps against the Disenchant and, and, and the lines, but... It's it's not really good. It's not really good. Also because Ron doesn't play swords. I get it. And it's easy from my position, of course, sitting here looking at how the game unfolds. And remember, the players don't have each other's deck lists or anything. So he probably expected Ron to also play with, uh, with swords to plowshares. But let's see. This combat step is going to be crucial, I think. Are we going to see an attack here with both Suchis? Yes, that's exactly what happens. Does he want to trade? I mean, you don't really want to do it, but maybe you have to do it. Yeah, you, you cannot go to three here against a deck with so many Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts. But this is perfect for Ron, right? Well, perfect, but it's not bad for him. I just keep wondering how many cards he's got in hand, because they seem like quite a lot, but he's not really interested in going for the Loa plan, so I guess maybe he's on 5 or something. Tapping, what are we going to see? Okay, Surrendip of Freed. So there's the Surrendip. And again, Wouters kind of with his back against the wall, needs to find at least one really good blocker. To take care of the Suchi and then he can send back the Surrendip. Gonna tap four. Are we gonna see a Suchi? Okay, this is quite nice. This is good news. Let's hope that the Suchi can stick for Wouter. Ronnie dropping to 12. 
If you're Ron, of course, you want to take care of the Suchi ASAP. He's got, of course, Psionic Blast in his deck. Only played out one so far, I believe. Playing with a full play set. It will be interesting to see how this is going to unfold. Going through his hand. Understandable, pretty crucial moment. I kind of feel if Wouters on three, he's as good as dead, but on seven, he has a little bit of a chance. So he has to do whatever he can do to try not to take any more damage. Uh oh, it's going to tap five. That is kind of scary. What is Ron going to do? Drop to 11. There's a disenchant. Yeah, of course, because of the gloom, has to pay extra, but hey, who cares? Yeah, the disenchant kind of seals the deal here. There's the attack. I mean, do you want to put your Mishra's Factory here in front of the bus? I, th I think you shouldn't. I think you send back Suchi, go to four. Or maybe you should. Who am I? I, I, under I understand if you're Valter, you don't want to go to four because you feel the Psionic Blast is coming. But I think in this case, you're already losing. Yeah, let's just let's call it what it is. I would consider taking the damage because you're not on three, you're on four. So if he has a bolt, at least you've, you're not dead on the spot. Yeah, there's a swamp here from the top of the deck. And uh, Ron going to 10. But it's the end of the road, I believe. Or not. Right, Wouter, no cards in hand. He can send back the Suchi, take five. Okay, he's going to two. Maybe he's got one more turn. Maybe. I'm not expecting it, but who knows? Let's see. Tapping a lot here. There's a brain. Okay, okay, so he's got another turn. Hey, man, as long as you're alive, you're alive, right? And uh, passing the turn here. I don't believe there's a single card here in the deck of, uh, of Wouter that can save him. Yep, there's a Black Knight in it. It seals the deal. And uh, I kind of, as expected, I saw this coming actually when I looked at both of the decks. Just the deck of Ron being being so strong, line dip bolt. And uh, yeah, but it was it's always fun to see Mono Black here in action. And uh, this was round number three of the Knights of Thorn. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing of this tournament, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because next week I will be back with another video from this event. We're going to show you matches all the way up to the finals. And there are some really, really cool matchups still to come. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And before you go, please consider leaving a like, share this on your socials, and also leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash timmytalks. And with your support, I can continue the channel. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page. You can join into the online events that I organize every once in a while. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als fik het is somber gezien.